Okay, welcome to this lesson. In this lesson, we are going to investigate the balancing of a uniform half meter rule. Over here, I've got a uniform half meter rule and I've been able to successfully balance it at this pivot. You can see I've put a black mark there. I've also put a black mark there where it is balancing. And just to prove that it's balancing, if I tap this side slightly like that, you can see that it starts swinging. It starts swinging about that particular point. So it is balanced at the 25 centimeter mark. Now, if we look at this, the diagram that I have over here, this is the 25 centimeter mark. Now, how many forces do we have acting on the meter rule at that point? First of all, let's appreciate the fact that a uniform meter rule has got its center of gravity at the geometrical center. This uniform meter rule is 50 centimeters. So it has its geometrical center at the 25 centimeter mark. That is where the weight of the half meter rule is acting as shown in the diagram. So the arrow here shows the weight of the meter rule acting at that particular point. Now the pivot is also exerting a force on it upwards and we call that force reaction. Very important. Although those forces may not be apparent in any system which is in a state of equilibrium, at least the forces acting must balance out each other. So the weight of the half meter rule acts vertically downwards. It's as if the meter rule is exerting a force downwards equal to W. And then this pivot or this knife edge is exerting an upward force equal to R or equal to the reaction. Those are the two forces which are acting on the meter rule. The pivot exerts a force equal to R on the meter rule upwards, while the earth pulls the meter rule downwards. So the forces acting on this meter rule, there are two of them. Its own weight, which is the force exerting on the earth, which is the force exerted on the meter rule by the earth, and the force exerted by this pivot upwards like that. Now we want to investigate something here. Suppose I were to suspend this weight at one point of the meter rule. This is the this is a weight of 0 0.4 Newton Newtons. Suppose I were to suspend it at the 5 centimeter mark. What do you think is going to happen? Of course, it's apparent that this system will no longer be balanced. It will turn in this direction. But I want to suspend that mass and balance the system at the same time without adding any other mass to the system. How is that possible? I suspend this at the 5 centimeter mark and then balance the system uh, and then manipulate the system until the half meter rule is balanced. Is that possible? Let's find out. So, obviously, I know what is going to happen if I put this weight at this point. So, I'm going to hold on to this other side like that as I suspend my mass there. And, of course, you can see um, I have to hold on to this other side. Otherwise, if I let it go, it's going to turn in the anti-clockwise direction. So, I have to move the meter roll, maybe to the right. Let me try moving it to my right and see whether a few things might happen. See, now it wants to turn clockwise. It means that at some point here, it's going to balance. Let me find out that point. So I'm going to gently move it until maybe it is at a position whereby if I release it, it balances. And you can see now it is balanced. And it is supported at the 16 centimeter mark. That is where we've got our pivot. So that system is balanced. Let's look at the forces which are acting on this system. One will be the weight of this mass. Number two, at this 25 centimeter mark, this mark here, there is its own weight acting vertically downwards. So those are two forces. 
0.4 newton force and the weight of the half meter rule over here. There will be a reaction at this point and there will be another force exerted by the rule on the support. We are not going to bother with those forces which are acting at this point because we are going to take moment about this point. Remember what we said in the last video. If you take moment about a point, any force whose line of action is through that point about which you are taking moments will have zero moment about that point. So it's a convenient way of getting rid of the some of the forces which are unknown and we might not need them. The trick is take moments about that point where there are some unknown forces and you don't need them. So the diagram basically looks like this. This is how the, now our diagram looks like. I've suspended the 0.4 Newton force, it's this one, at the 5 centimeter mark and then the weight is acting at the 25 centimeter mark vertically down once and our pivot is at this point. And if I read that value correctly, it's the 16 centimeter mark. And this system is in equilibrium. It is in a state of balance. So, can I apply the principle of moments? Of course, I can. Let me see how this one can be done. So, this is my pivot, point O. I'm going to take moments about this point. I know that the weight of this half meter rule tends to turn this system clockwise. The 0.4 Newton force tends to turn it in the anti-clockwise direction. And this system is in equilibrium. So I'm going to put an equal sign at the point about which I'm taking moments. And then I'm going to say the clockwise moment about point O is equal to the anti-clockwise moment about the same point, which is point O. Now let's see. The anti-clockwise moment is due to a force of 0.4 newtons. I have to multiply it by the distance from the point about which I'm taking moments all the way to the line of action of the 0.4 newton force. And it is D1. From 5 centimeter mark all the way to the 16 centimeter mark, that is 11 centimeters. 11 centimeters is 0.11 meters. The other force acting on this direction is the weight of the meter rule. The weight of the half meter rule. So W times the distance from the 16 centimeter mark to the 25 centimeter mark, that is 9 centimeters. 9 centimeters is 0 0.09 meters. And I can work out my weight to be equal to 0 0.044 divided by 0 0.09. And this one will give us 0 0.04. Rather, this one is going to give me 0 0.04. Four nine newtons. And that is the force which is acting on the meter rule at this point. But that force which is acting on the meter rule at this point is its own weight. Therefore, since I know the weight is given by mg, it implies that m is equal to w divided by G, and this will be equal to 0 0.49 newtons divided by 10 newton per kilogram, and the weight will be equal to 0 0.049 kilograms. Of course, this is equal to 49 grams. And you can see, I can be able to use one mass, just one mass, whose value is known, so that I can get its weight. For example, the mass there was um, 40, 
was 40 grams and therefore its weight was 0 0.4 newtons. So I used one mass, a meter rule and a pivot and I can be able to determine the weight of the meter rule from which I can calculate its mass. It is just as simple as that. I can shift the position of the 40 gram mass to a different position altogether, readjust, find the new balance point, apply the principle of moments, and I will always get the same mass of the meter. This one here. So this investigation is easy to carry out. All you need is either a half meter rule or a complete meter rule, a known mass, and a knife edge. The first thing is you balance the meter rule without any weight so that you can get its center of gravity. You mark that point. And then you get the known mass. Suspend it at some point, a known point somewhere there, and then balance the system. Once it is balanced, find the value of D1 and D2. And using D1 and D2, you are able to calculate the unknown weight of the meter. And this experiment is just as simple as that. So in this experiment, we had set out to determine the mass of a meter rule using the principle of moments.